All right. Uh, good morning. My name is Marion Deichmann, and I am a Holocaust survivor from France. I actually just arrived in the United States last December, December 2020. So um, this is the book I wrote of my story and in honor of my mother. This is why it's entitled, Her Name Shall Remain Unforgotten. Forgotten, sorry. I was born in Germany six weeks in, at the end of 32 and Hitler uh, that psychopath came to power in January 1933. So I came into this world when the major hunt to exterminate the Jews, first of Germany, but his intention was all over Europe. Uh, started almost immediately. I was born, next slide. I was born in Karlsruhe, which is on the Rhine River in Germany. That picture just denotes how picture of me they was taken in Karlsruhe. I was 11 months old and the photographer was very proud of her work. So she put it in her window as a advertisement. And um, a Nazi came by, I was 11 months old. Nazi came by and said, this girl, this uh, baby has dark hair and looks Jewish. You must take that picture down. So next slide, please. So this is what it was to be in Germany at that time. These are the three people that were with me during the war. Two people, my mother, myself at age four, and my grandmother. So we had to, I was, very young, a year and a half, we had to leave Germany because my father's work, he lost his job. He worked actually for my grandfather and my grandfather's business, which was import and export of fabric from England was destroyed. So we were without income. And at the time, remember, there was no social security or anything like that. And any savings can go very fast. So we went, at first, we went to Luxembourg. Next slide. This was my grandfather in Germany. He was in Germany, we were in Germany for hundreds, hundreds of years. So that the spirit of Germans, they were Germans first and Jews after. That was their religion. You didn't mix religion and nationality. He fought in World War I. My other grand, my grandfather, great grandfather fought in the, the war of 1871, which these were wars, that, well, World War I was the world but all the other wars with Germany against France. Next slide. <laughs> so we escaped to Luxembourg in this house. Uh, my paternal grandmother was from Luxembourg. So my father still had friends there. So we, we went there, next slide. There, there, 
your connection is unstable. Okay, next slide, please. This is uh, the birth certificate of my father, just to show you. And he was born in Alsace, but Alsace was German at the time, um, after uh, the war of 1871. So he, he was Prussian, he was got a Prussian. Next slide. Next slide, please. This is the passport in 1938 when Hitler came to power. All Jews, the men had to, that was the passport, yeah. Uh, you'll see, next slide, please. Next slide, please. My grandfather, you have heard of Crystal Knight, when they, in 1938, they destroyed the synagogues, broke all the whatever, of course, the chandeliers inside, but also all the windows. And the men were rounded up and sent to Buchenwald concentration camp. That's when my, my grandfather went. But he was released. He, this was November 1938, actually between 9th and the 11th. And uh, he was released in uh, November 22nd. So he went to camp for about two, uh, 10 days. Next slide, please. This is me, next slide. And here you have um, a slide of, I went, we went to Luxembourg, Luxembourg city, not in the village anymore. We lived in the capital Luxembourg and there the teachers, because the Nazis had invaded Belgium, Luxembourg, Holland, and France. The teachers were obliged to mark down their classes who was Jewish. And um, so um, you can see my name. I don't know if you can see my name. I had, so that you could be uh, taken away to a concentration camp. My best friend, next slide, please. Yeah, this is, uh, again, it's in French. Uh, all the children that have been dis dis from that school who were Jews had to be signaled by the teachers. Just imagine if, this happened here, for instance. Next slide, please. This is my best friend, Jacqueline, who was also Jewish. Her name was Wolf, Jacqueline Wolf. And unfortunately, she was taken away to Auschwitz and gassed. I was lucky, next slide because my mother, and this is the last picture taken of me and my mother in Luxembourg before we fled to Paris. My grandmother was in Paris with her youngest brother. Next slide. This was one of the last visits, 38, in Germany. Next slide. So the Jews, just to give you an example, this was one of my favorite aunts, Ida Bock was her name. And you see in this passport that all Jews of Germany and wherever they were had to, if they were girls or women, their name was Sarah in the middle. The men had to have Israel. So that if you present it, you know, because you didn't look different, people didn't look at Jews, don't look different. So to identify them, 
you had to show your passport. That was your, at the time, your driver's license, if you wish. And it's as, as if the driver's license says that you're Jewish. And if the police controls you, you get taken away and murdered. Next slide, please. And Ida, though, the same person, she escaped. And her, the, we wanted to, everybody wanted to come to the USA, but the USA was not open to, they had quotas and they didn't open their, their borders to persecuted Jews. So she found a way because there was one country that accepted Jews after 1938, that was the Dominican Republic. So she went to, if you know your geography, from Munich, where she lived, she went to Moscow. Moscow, this is, this is in Russian, uh, Moscow, she went to Vladivostok, which is on the Chinese border. She went to Shanghai. Next slide, please. And you see Chinese. And from China, there were, from Shanghai, there was a boat to Cuba. And then finally, she was able to come to the United States. So she was saved. You see the stamp is 1940, which was the last, the last days you could immigrate. Next slide. My cousin Erica was not so lucky. She was also in Munich, but she and her parents were taken the Nazis came, there was a razzia, you call that a razzia, I think in English. She was taken with her parents to Vilnius, Lithuania, and they were shot. They had to dig their graves and they were shot. Next slide. So this is me in Paris. In comparison, we were she was one year older than I, so she would be my age, one year older. Next slide. So here we are in Paris. This is French. And you had to get, but that's during wartime anywhere. You were rationed. You had so much milk a day, just a pint, not even. Uh, milk and, and potatoes and you just didn't I during the war I in Paris I was hungry. Next slide. Then we were in Paris. We found a little um, apartment where we lived my grandmother, my mother and I and the French government under the Vichy regime, Nazi regime, you had to go to city hall and get registered. So th these are my, this is my mo mother's registration, her name, time she was born, I mean, day she was born, and I am also as her child. And underneath in so the Nazis used those files, of course, to go and hunt the Jews wherever they were in Paris. So this unfortunately shows what is to become of my mother. She was taken the 29, she was arrested, it says, the 16th July 1942, which is, uh, it's called La Rafle du Veldiv, which you might have heard. It's when thousands of Jews, thousands of Jews were taken and sent to concentration camps. So 
she it says the one of the dates is when my mother was assassinated in the gas chamber. Next slide. This is the signs the Jews had in Paris had to be ident and identifiable. As I said, they don't look different uh, than the French. So you had to wear a star, which you had to get with your coupons on top. Next slide. And it says Juif, which is Jew in France, in French. It's the same language. Uh, I mean, in, in Germany, if there were any Jews left, you had to, it was Jude. If it had been in an English uh, speaking country, it would have been Jew. Next slide. So you had to wear this. And of course, as I said, it was easy then to track all the Jews. My mother put the sign on my, you had to wear it on your clothes on the left-hand side. And uh, she sewed it on with snaps actually. So that because you only had three, and so you could put one on your coat, your dress, or, or, or whatever. Next slide. This is the last, the very last letter card that my mother sent from Drancy, which was the camp in France from which those horrible trains uh, took off from Drancy and they went direct to Auschwitz. This is the last, last sign of life that my mother wrote in French. Yes, next slide. That was my uncle Paul, the younger brother of my mother <clears throat> and the reason why we all came to Paris, but he was taken to be, he was in the resistance and then he also was in a camp, but he stayed in France. And in France, he escaped and went to the countryside and hid. He uh, was on a farm uh, and just worked as a laborer on a farm during, to save his life. Next slide. So I wrote to my uncle, um, telling him that in Paris, everything was okay. We couldn't say anything anyway, it was censored. So it says in the middle where you read attention, it said, if you'd say anything that's illegal, like saying that your mother was taken, uh, it just, uh, this, was in, this was in August 42, as you can, perhaps you can read the stamp. Next slide. So then in Paris, I, when my mother was taken, when the, uh, the police in, in civilian clothes came to get my mother where we lived, I wanted to go with her, but they said, your name is not on the list. My grandmother's name was not on the list either. So some resistant person came and I mean, a person, a man from the resistance came and said, you can't stay here. You must go in hiding. So my grandmother went into hiding and a social worker came to get me and took me to several pe people in, in Paris, but they couldn't keep me. So one, came and we took the bus to go to Normandy. And this is the family that I was with who were wonderful. He was also in the resistance, but you know, if they were caught by the Nazis, it would have cost at least his life. Um, so I was part of the family 
uh, and I'm still in touch with whoever uh, because the two, uh, of course, Monsieur, their name was Parini. The two boys died recently. Uh, Claudine, the my war sister, uh, is still alive, and I'm in touch with her. In she lives in the south of France. And uh, next slide. So in Normandy, but that's the story that I'm sure you have heard, we were bombed. We were bombed out and I was with the family until we were freed. But this by the allies. And in our case, it was the Americans. But the bombing was also, um, was also done by the British. And it was extremely rough battle in Normandy. Many, many people didn't survive. Next page. Here's me on the farm with some, we had to hide when the, when the bombing was done of that little city, we had to go into uh, to the, to the, to farms, farmland. And the Germans, to destroy the most homes that they could, they put their anti-aircraft cannons behind farms, next to farms. So when the allies bombed the farms, I mean, bombed the cannons, the anti-aircraft cannons, they also bombed the farms. And we survived miraculously because the, the roof of the farm was totally uh, taken off by, by bombs. Next slide. This is uh, Claudine is her name and I after or during the war right after in 1944, before the war ended, as you know, uh, with Japan, with America coming into the war, World War II, with the attack of Pearl Harbor in 41. Next slide. Next slide. So after the war, there was there were committees, lots of committees, who uh, we were waiting for my mother to come back as we all then met again in Paris in uh, December 1944. And um, this is an organization that went to that gave the news, and it said that. Uh, my mother was deported to Auschwitz and her name is not on the list of survivors. So then I further inquired and I, by, by the French, uh, the French Holocaust, uh, there's, the, there's also a museum in Paris and uh, they did some research and on the and they found that she was assassinated by gas in the gas chamber right after arrival next slide please so we came out of the war alive I had other members of my German um, family that also went to concentration camps. I have no knowledge that anybody else got gassed. They were killed. They were in camps, but they died of, uh, of malnutrition and whatever, a slow death. And my mother, who was 39 years old, was uh, assassinated by gas. I then, my uncle said, we can't stay in Europe. It, it was just even after the war. So um, I was a refugee, um, the, certifying uh, you know, my name, where I was born, 
uh, that I was the the um, the daughter of Kurt Deichmann and Alice Aaron. That was her her maiden name, which of course is uh, immediately identifiable as being a Jewish name. And uh, I got papers. And then we came to the United States. Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide. That's still in Paris. Next slide. This is the certificate of that I could travel. You see how long it is? They had to certify because all the papers, everything got destroyed. Uh, Germany was bombed. Uh, and of course, and um, by the allies and many, many uh, official buildings were destroyed. So it was difficulty to prove, difficult to prove your uh, identity. So this was just a, a traveling certificate. Next slide. And there's me on the ship coming to the United States. First time in 1947. Next slide. I was a Girl Scout in France and in the United States. This is the US. We were camping. I, I came to Manhattan. I lived in Manhattan from the age of 14 to 21. And I was a scout in France and a scout in, in New York. Next slide. I even marched on, this was Broadway in uh, 1948 with the French scouts. And there were the American scouts in back. Yes, next slide. Next slide. My father, my, my parents, you're probably wondering what happened to my father. My father's, my uncle Eric went to Brazil in the 20s uh, to see if he could live there because I had another cousin. And of course, as he was there, he provided visas for his family. So my grandparents, paternal grandparents, and my father, who was, they were separated, my mother and him, and she didn't want to go to Brazil. So they looked for me after the war. So this is just to tell you that I found my father again, whom I hadn't seen when I was four, when I was 48. Next slide. And my uncle replied to the, this was correspondence to the Red Cross. My uncle replied, no, I don't want her to go to Brazil. I want her to stay with us because my grandmother had lost her daughter and, uh, and we shall raise her. Next slide. And I found my father and my uncle Eric again. And they, live, uh, they lived happily after that in, in Rio. Next slide. This is the memorial. This is the Holocaust, which is in French, you say La Shoah. Um, I think I have it in English also. Oh, the name of all the 76,000 Jews in concentration camps are written on that. Next slide. 76,000 among 11,000 children deported from France, as you can read it, with the collaboration of the Vichy government as part of the Nazi plan 
to exterminate Judaism in Europe. Most of them were murdered between 42 and 45, 44 in Auschwitz-Birkenau. Others in the Sobibor and Lublin Maidanek camps. Only 2,500 people survived deportation. From 76,000, only 2,500 came back. So this is in Paris. I went there, of course, I go there whenever I can. Next slide, please. This is what it is. This is what it looks like. The wall, the walls really of all the names, 76,000 names. Next slide, please. And there you see it's on alph alphabetical order. And in the middle, you can see Alice Deichmann. She was born in 1903. She died July 1942, 39 years old. When she left Paris, she was in perfect health. Next slide. Questions? Hi, we do have a couple questions. Um, let's see, the first, um, after surviving so much trauma, how does one go on to live a happy and healthy life? Well, the trauma is there. You have to learn how to live with it. My mother is in my heart. I live with her. She was, well, of course, I can't uh, say anything. Uh, she was my whole world. Whatever she said, I believed. If, if she would have said, you know, uh, we'll fly to the moon. Well, now it's possible, but I would have, you know, the earth was square, I would have believed her. So um, she was everything. She was a very gentle person. I was not a, uh, an obedient child. So, but my grandmother was there to correct me. <laughs> um, so you have to live, I also become, became uh, I, I did, of course, a psychotherapy, um, I, uh, um, psychoanalysis, and I became myself a psychologist and psychotherapist. And I worked for the Health, World Health Organization for 20 years after that. So that trauma is with you. You just have to learn how to live with it. Um, you shared a lot of um, really great images and documents. How did you get a hold of those again? Did a family member kind of save them and protect them? Yes, uh, I had actually, I have a beautiful painting that was done in 1929 of my mother, which I should really have as a background. Um, it's in the living room. And um, uh, my aunts, because some of my family is, is not Jewish. Some of my family are Protestants and they survived in, in Germany. And um, then, uh, so that's how I got the pictures. My grandmother um, and my mother, there was one honest, very resistant because you had people who resist the Nazis huh? in, in uh, Luxembourg where we were, uh, that lady saved all the paintings that my mother had, uh, her self portrait, her, not self portrait, but her portrait, which is almost life size. Um, she returned to us. Uh, I had the slide, but I didn't want to explain it because you know, it's, it would have interrupted our um, conversation. Anyway, um, 
so, and the photos, I got a lot of them from my cousin, my mother's cousin, Elizabeth in Germany. My great grandmother was Lutheran and some of my great aunts had either married Jews or had married Christians. So, but I am uh, Jewish, um, th uh, I would say 90%. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, what, what made you start sharing your story and your family's story? Um, what kind of brought you to that point? Because I started in schools, I, I made my slides because I gave conferences. I was invited. Uh, the first time actually was in Luxembourg by a man who uh, found the list of names of the children that were deported and or were on the list, like I was, um, the teachers in class. I mean, this was first grade, second grade. They had to tell the authorities who was Jewish in their class? So you can imagine how easy it was for the Nazis to come and, and, and just, you know, just get them, collect them, as it were. And I, um, the hatred, what my, the theme should really be the hatred that can be aroused amongst people against each other because of religion, because of color, you know, and, and human beings are all shades from white to black and in between, all color of eyes. So it's the hatred that can be aroused from one group to uh, a dictatorship. And of course, as we all know, the Nazi regime was the ultimate of dictatorship and genocides. Six million Jews, he wanted to eradicate, remember, Judaism on the face of this earth, not just in Germany. Um, when you touched a bit about when you first came to America, but what was that like? What was that kind of first experience for you? Very difficult because now it's still very difficult. Um, first of all, European countries are very small so that the distances are not that big. Um, and the girls, when I came in 1947 uh, to Manhattan, um, I was not used to the people living together. Uh, America is not a melting pot. It's, uh, it's patchwork, um, you know, so that it's uh, their Jewish neighborhoods, their black neighborhoods. Uh, and that was already in 1947. And I came and America was and is a racist country. I came to New York, the black, the Afro-Americans had to sit in the back of the bus. Uh, they were strictly, the employment was strictly as domestics or, or uh, jazz, I mean music, uh, but American uh, music. And uh, even though they served in World War II, <laughs> It didn't matter. And remember, Roosevelt was the first one who invited a, a Afro-American singer to come and sing at the White House. So, and, and we went up on vacation to the Catskills into a family, um, it was a hotel where they served, you know, uh, food. And on the lawn was, I think, Gentiles only. So you can imagine coming from, from France, the effect 
that had. And then I went back to France. I've lived in France most of my life because I married a Frenchman. <laughs> and how did you two meet? On a ship. I was going back to France. <laughs> he had come to France to for to America, uh, to Colorado on an uh, on a base for training at, on some planes. So we met on the ship. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, one last question that I'm seeing right now, um, or that I have right now. Sorry, is what kind of message do you want people to come away with from hearing your story? How can they take a stand against anti-Semitism and other forms of hatred? Tolerance, tolerance, whether it's against religions, colors, tolerance. It's very difficult to accept other people if they are different from you. Yes, it is. And we, in a democracy, you know, we are all equal. And that has to come through. And you have hate groups here. You have hate groups in Europe. You have neo-Nazis again. You have to nip that in the bud. And that's why I go around in classes wherever I can. <laughs> I tell my story to young people. And in France, I went to classes, the history classes, that's how uh, things are organized over there. And usually in, I don't know what, to 13, 14 year olds, and then to older ones again, uh, 17, 18, in their history class, when they have, when they are taught World War II, I go as a witness. And I've done that now for uh, quite a number of years. Thank you so much. That is um, all the questions I'm seeing. It was a pleasure hearing your story. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Sierra.